Let's have a look at zip and unzip in Python. Zip allows us to combine separate lists into one single list, and unzip does the exact opposite by allowing us to split a list into multiple lists. So let's have a look at how we can use zip to combine separate lists together. Over here you can see that I have a list of first names and a list of last names. And I want to put together these two names, these two names, and these two names. Specifically, for, for the first one, uh, we would like to have the first name Albert and the last name Amt, and we want to proceed similarly with the last two entries. One way that we could do this is using the zip function. So over here you can see I've created a new variable called first and last name, which is a list, and it zips together the first name and the last name. So I've simply input the first name as the first parameter and the last name as the last parameter. And afterwards, to see the result, I'm printing out the result, and I'm also going to print out the type of this new variable to see that it is in fact a list. So this is going to be a list. Now, I'm going to execute this, and you can see down here the result of the two print statements. The very first one is from the zipped up lists. So you can see that since we have square brackets at the very end, there's a square bracket here and a square bracket there. And since these are square brackets, we are in fact dealing with a list. But within this list, you can see that we also have three pairs of rounded brackets. So the zip function has put together the first and last names into tuples. So it's taken the first name Albert, for example, the last name Amt, and put it into a tuple, as you can see down here. And what that means is that we can access these elements in even more granular uh, ways. So that means if we were to add an index at the very end over here, say zero, we could access the very first tuple. And we can access the first element of the first tuple by adding another index. So by using the two zeros, we would then be accessing the very first element of the very first tuple. Now, of course, we don't necessarily need to take zero, zero, but that's just an easy example. We could also take anything that is within the range of the lists. So if we would like to get belly out, then we could take the index one uh, for the first tuple and the index uh, zero for the first element of the second tuple. So let's go ahead and try that actually. Um, I'm going to zoom down a little bit further. And over here you can see that I have a few more examples. So using one index first, we, we can go ahead and execute this and you'll see that I get the very first tuple over here being output. And you can also see that it is a tuple because I'm also printing the type of this um, element. And you can see it is of type tuple. And finally, using the two zeros at the very end to access the very first tuple and the first element within the tuple, you can see that I have Albert being output. And of course, Albert is a string in itself. All right, so moving on, let's have a look at how we can use the zip function with loops. Over here, you can see I have the first and last name lists as I did earlier, but just let me make sure that the pen has the right size. Um, okay, so over here, you can see I have the first and last names, and these lists are the ones we used earlier. And let's say I want to create a string output in the console, which says first name and then outputs the first name of the first person and then last name and outputs the last name of the first person. And I want to do that for all three people in the list. So one slightly inconvenient way is the top one, because over here we have to work with indices, right? So I have this index over here. I know that both of these lists have three elements. So I'm going through the range of zero to three. And remember the last element over here is not included. So we're going to be going through the values zero, one and two, and that corresponds 
to the first and last name indices, which are going to be 0, 1, and 2. And so then I have the indices here, which go, uh, which are going to make sure that we're having the right uh, combination of first and last name. So if I were to execute this very first uh, for loop, you'll be able to see that the desired output is achieved. We have first name Albert, last name Amt, and we have that happening for all three names. A slightly more convenient way using zip is to use it in the for loop as I have done over here. So you can see I have the first name, the last name, and then I'm zipping together the first name and last name, and I'm simply then printing out um, the same sentence as above, but now I'm using the first name and the last name as parameters over here. And you can see that the result is going to be exactly the same as it is above. So you can see exactly the same result. So you can say that the zip function does make for loops a little bit cleaner. The next thing I want to show you is what happens when a list is longer than another list when zipping together. So over here you can see that I have four elements at the top. So this Debbie name over here is a new one. So this has a length of four, but the last name list has a length of three. So let's try and zip this together and see what happens. And you can see, wait, let me clear that and let me run it again. So you can see that over here, even though I have added a new name to the list over here, even though this new name has appeared, the result has stayed the same as before. If you look earlier in the video, when we zipped together the list, this was what we got, Albert Ant, Belly Bob, and Cindy Cam. And Debbie is simply left out because there is nothing to zip it to in the second list. And that's why we forget about it. So just remember with unequal lists, the unequal elements are simply left out. Uh, the next thing um, I want to show you is that we can also use multiple um, lists. So uh, we've been using two all along, but we can go ahead and use more than that. Um, so just to show you that it also works with three, let me briefly execute this over here. Um, you can see that we have the tuples, but now they have three elements. So we've simply added one more value. That's no problem. So bear in mind that you can use more than two lists when zipping together. And finally, I want to show you that we can also use unzip to split. Now, when using unzip, you actually still have to use the zip function, but you use it in combination with an asterisk. So let me show you how that works. Over here, you can see that I have a full name list. So over here, we have the individual tuples uh, denoted by the rounded brackets. And within these tuples, we have a first name, last name, and an age. And now let's say we want to split this up. So we want these first names in a list, we want the last names in a second list, and we want the ages in a third list. So this is going to be one, two, three lists. The way to do that would be to write first name, comma, last name, comma, uh, age, so these are going to be the names of the inv individual lists. And then what we do is we use zip over here and we have to input as an argument the list we want to split, which is the full name list, which corresponds to the full name list over here. So I've simply put that in there. But in addition, you have to make sure to use this small star over here because that is going to unzip the list into these individual lists that we have over here. And once that's done, we can go ahead and simply execute this. And if we do, you will see that we have, um, yeah, individual lists. So in the bottom, you can see the first names and you have the first names only. Then you have the last names, which are the last names and the ages which contain only the ages. So that is exactly how you unzip to split a long list like this one into separate individual lists.